Edmund Burke was one of the leading philosopher statesmen of the 18th century. He was born in Dublin in 1730 and he died in Buckinghamshire in 1797. Uh, he, for 30 years uh, he was an active and eloquent member of the British House of Commons, really during a period of turmoil and transformation domestically and globally. Interestingly, um, the legacy of Burke is a confusing one because he was seen as a leading light of liberalism uh, really down until the 1880s and since then he was appropriated as a sort of stalwart uh, conservative philosopher. Both of these appropriations, if you like, seem to me to be simplifications. I think his real legacy, um, at least ought to be, on the one hand the way in which he contributed to uh, the historical philosophical method in approaching politics generally, but also I think he provides sharp analysis for thinking about major elements of our own political world, like for instance parliamentarism, uh, constitutionalism, um, the idea of party altogether, um, obviously revolution, but also um, ideas like national allegiance. Burke made two major contributions. Uh, First of all, as an Enlightenment figure himself, uh, but also in dialogue with other uh, thinkers of the period, like Montesquieu and Rousseau and David Hume and Adam Smith. But second of all, uh, he um, was, of course, as a parliamentarian, uh, a contributor to debate about the major developments of the period. So, for instance, the American Revolution, um, equally uh, the French Revolution, of course, uh, domestic developments in Britain, constitutional change in Ireland, um, and significantly, of course, also the British conquest of India. Well, I think it, for previous um, writers on Burke, uh, first of all, it's been difficult to integrate him as a thinker on the one hand and as a parliamentarian on the other. So I think what's different about my book is an attempt to combine political history with intellectual history and therefore bringing the major strands of his career into one analysis.